Next question is from Justin90. What do you guys think about 24-hour fitness not freezing memberships? I didn't know these sons of bitches were doing this. Yeah, so I so I looked it up. I, I looked into the details, oh, right? Is that true? Well, so people were complaining that 24-hour yeah, fitness shiesty. was making it impossible to cancel. So you'd have to call in to cancel your membership. Nobody's answering the phone, and then they shut the, the call line down. And the only way you could get in contact with anybody was apparently through their website, and yet nobody was getting in contact. So everybody's getting pissed off. And what 24 Fitness put out a statement and said that, and this is based off this article that I, you know, that I, that I, I hope for their sake, I hope this isn't true because this is the type of person I am. I'm such, so they're, they're getting my membership dues just like the other three memberships that I'm paying right now. <laughs> I just haven't had the time to get around to freeze them. I didn't know they are doing it, but just because of that, and I know that that's probably fucking a lot of people. I'm the type of person that as soon as this is all cleared and gone, I will walk in, cancel that, and I'll never get a membership there Oh, again. because of the way they handle it. Yeah, just because yeah. of the way you handle well, it. So, so I hope for their sake this ain't true. So here's what the CEO said in an email to uh, members. It says, please be assured that your membership will be extended for the same, peri same period that our clubs will be temporarily closed. So rather than freezing... They're, they're, they're pushing dues, it out like every other gym does. Yeah. You know, LA Fitness did that. Gold's Gym did that. Rather than free, that they're still make any sense. they're still billing people. Yeah, and then if if the gyms were closed for a month, when they come back, they'll extend them a month. I think that's a terrible. That's not the way to well, go. Well, it doesn't. You can't do that to people that are month to month. Yeah. If yeah. you're a month to month membership, you should be able to cancel what the fuck you want. You're, right. You're still creating a financial hardship for people that don't have a job right now. Yeah, dude. This is bad. I mean, if you were a gym, how would you handle this? Because also, you want to imagine you're here, you are, you're a gym company. Maybe they're not financially very liquid. And so they're like, oh shit, we can't freeze. We need mm. this cash to come well, in. Well, they fall in the they fall in the category of the, the retailers. Like I said, it was, they probably only have 19 days worth of cash backed up. Mm. But I mean, they also will fall in the category of being able to get loans that will probably be forgiven in the future for to keep your paying your employees and doing things like that. So I would hope that that would happen. Like, I don't know that that really that pisses me off to even hear something like yeah, that because that scarcity mindset is rough. I'm such a principal with. guy, yeah. and I'll uh, as much as I like having the luxury of having a 24 hour fitness membership because I know that they're everywhere, and if there's that that few times a year yeah. where I need one, I use it. Um, I'm also the type of person out of principle because they did something like that that I'll I'll cut them off. Yeah, I we'll appreciate the businesses that take a lump and they come back stronger. You know, like I feel like, you know, like opportunity for this is like you can shine in this or you can not. And you can like try and like hold whatever money you have, like still coming in, even though you're like everybody else is like hurting right now. It's like, you know, like I, I have no empathy for him because yeah, part, of, part of why I left the company was and what, how we all got together was they weren't evolving. I felt like fitness had been, uh, for the most part, they they were part of the the stagnant part of the industry, the old model, and you know they really weren't reinventing themselves and thinking of the future. We knew that, you know, digital media and streaming was the future of how fitness was done, and Twenty Four Fitness was late to the party. Mm -hmm. And considering they're a billion dollar company, they should have been one of the first. And back in Mark Mastroff days, they were always the first. Mm -hmm. They were the they, they were, were the innovators. They, exactly. They were they were setting the bar. They were constantly uh, creating and doing what was new and cutting edge. And man, once they once they sold and he was out of that company, it was never the same. And so I, I have no empathy for what they're going through right now whatsoever. Well, I have empathy for the people that work there yeah. and the trainers that are probably handcuffed right now because they have policies oh, like absolutely. they have policies that say you can't moonlight. You mm -hmm. can't be a trainer for them. They'll and, fire you if they Right. Fire. So I don't know, I have no idea what they're do they did they lift that ban right now? Are they telling trainers go ahead and virtually train clients because we can't pay you anymore? Like what are they I have no idea what they're doing right now, but the people that I feel the most sorry for are the people that are employed there that are probably not getting paychecks anymore because most of them are well, hour, hourly employees. I think mm -hmm. right now one of the most important things that a company can do is uh, is is pay attention to how they're going to be viewed by the public when this is all said and done. Mm -hmm. So rather than just looking at the numbers and saying, okay, we can't afford to freeze uh, memberships, we're just going to extend it after when they come back. Because we're in an era of social media and fast communication, uh, now the word gets out, right? The word gets out that you guys are doing this and you guys look like assholes. When it's all said and done, that's going to look terrible on you and it'll probably hurt you more than had you done the, you know, the, the principled thing 
and sent out an email and said, hey, guys, look, this is probably going to hurt us really bad, but obviously we're closed. We're automatically freezing all memberships. You probably would end up in the long term uh, better off rather than this strategy and shutting everything down and not responding to anybody because that was a big complaint yeah. is that people yeah, couldn't even shysty they couldn't even talk to anybody no. to cancel their membership which is uh you know that's a little that's not the best uh, not the best strategy and I, and I recommend this for any business if you're suffering right now I think if you're honest to your customers tell them what's going on I'm, I'm not saying it'll save you. But you're going to be remembered for how you handled the situation more, uh, the, you know, a lot. That's how you're going to be remembered. You're going to be remembered how you handled the situation. So think of it that way. Like, how am I going to be remembered? How is my company going to be? How are these people going to remember us when all was said and done? Are we going to be remembered as greedy or as unfair? Or are we going to be remembered as that one company that, you know, did the right thing for its customers? Because that, I think, is going to go... A long way when when all of this is you know said and done. I agree.